of, of just garbage. Um, the average child in the United States watches four hours of television. They've, by the time that they reach adulthood, they've seen hundreds of thousands of violent crime, violent acts on, on television. They're not able to distinguish at, a, at an early age. Kids yeah. can't distinguish between what they see on the retardo vision and reality. And reality. Um, yeah. So it's children are on Ritalin all the time. Yeah, we yeah. our kids are drugged. If they show the slightest bit of of Different creativity, different, yeah. you know, the teachers say, "Oh, we've got to drug that one. That one is, you know, that one's creating mm -hmm. a problem." Yeah, um, and a teacher can actually tell the parents, "Give him Ritalin." Yeah, mm -hmm. teacher does not have medical education. Not now. Suppose and uh, someone looks at our time period here, a hundred years from now, what would they find? What would they think? Can well, we at this point in time, here? <laughs> the United States is over. You know, it was a great experiment, but the United States has 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 passed its its height. We're on our way down. We're no longer going to become a superpower. Um, right now, we're the bully. Um, we're the biggest bully on the planet, and we think we know what's best for everyone else. There are other cultures um, that are better than ours, that are stronger than ours, um, and those cultures will surpass ours. Um, our culture of consumption is is obsolete. It cannot be sustained. Mm -hmm. um, our culture of, of bullying the rest of the world and thinking that, you know, we're the greatest and we know what's right, that's obsolete. That, that, we never had the right to do that in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I see, and maybe fortunately, I see China becoming the world's next superpower. They've got mm -hmm. the people, they've got the economic base, they've got the spiritual base. Um, if you look at it from the spiritual aspect, the practice of Qigong, which many, many Chinese practice Qigong every day, mm -hmm. it furthers a person evolution. It makes you smarter, it makes you healthier, it prevents disease, it cures disease, it makes you more psychic, but it also makes you more compassionate. More wholesome. It makes more you wholesome. more kind, it makes you more intuitive. It, so I don't see, it, and that's the good news. The good news is that as these super psychics in China mm -hmm. grow in influence and they grow in numbers and they grow in power, I think that's going to have a civilizing effect. I don't see China using that, being able to successfully use them as a weapon, mm -hmm. as an offensive weapon. They might be able to use them as a defensive weapon, but that's that's the, the you know the way mm -hmm. that uh, Qigong causes a person to evolve is that it causes you to evolve into a better person. So, but, you know, a super psychic is not likely to use their abilities to go out and just attack someone. Attack somebody. And now, we've been using the word super all through the program. Mm -hmm. uh, let's define super. Um, well, the <coughs> Chinese refer to it as EHF, um, Extraordinary or Exceptional Human Function. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the people who stand out above all the others that have extraordinary abilities such as you know the ability to make flowers bloom there's a mm -hmm. woman in china who can just wave her hand and cause a thousand buds to suddenly just open and the flowers bloom mm -hmm. um, there's people that walk through walls there's people that can remotely start fires there was one girl mentioned in there who was studied by several different scientists and different institutions who would wake up in the morning find that she had holes in her clothes burned um, mm -hmm. She was at school and was starting fires all over the school, and they had to throw her out of school. Fortunately, she was able to get some help and learn yeah, and to... And how to maneuver that. Yeah. Um, um, so that ability, or that well, curse of hers, as, mm -hmm. however you want to look at it, has subsided. It's under control. Um, but imagine if, you know, she could start fires in the Pentagon. You know? Yeah. But now, in uh, where you, you, you come from, outside mm -hmm. the United States, so do you find things like that more relaxed? This topic, the, the topic, the uh -huh, psychic yeah. powers. Mm -hmm. Well, in my country, we are more relaxed. Mm -hmm. We are not a military power, so we just live our life mm -hmm. as it goes. And uh, we're not politically important either, so we are left alone, which is great because we can live our culture without having to mm -hmm. succumb to other cultures, bigger cultures. And um, even in time of communism and socialism, because I was born in Czechoslovakia and raised there, even then we have healers. Almost every 
region, every bigger town, or mostly though in villages, rural areas, there mm -hmm. was this one person who was capable of healing people or just uh, diagnosing people just from right, looking at their yeah. picture. And um, they are still out there, they are visited, and there is a lady that has um, two pages in one magazine that's very popular. Mm -hmm. Here's a picture, you can write to her what troubles you, mostly health problems, and she will heal you if mm -hmm. she has time. Yeah, so, so this is not suppressed. Yeah, we so do not laugh at it. We take it normal. No, it's not it's normal. That's it's normal, sorry, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just normal. It's only when we We're not afraid it. of it, no. Yeah, and uh, you know, when, when we try to, uh, when it's unfamiliar to us, it becomes threatening. Mm -hmm. Actually, in my country, it's interesting. Interesting. It's mysterious and it's mind-boggling mm -hmm. and people like to talk about it mm -hmm. but uh, we do not really condemn such people we do mm -hmm. not laugh at them we do not have the budget to do scientific studies on it but people mm -hmm. accept it mm -hmm. and they're happy when they have such people in family yeah mm -hmm. yeah well, well you, you'll find even in this country anybody that's trying to do something out of the norm doesn't have a budget either they have a grand <laughs> yeah. they, yes. you know you know you know yeah <laughs> if there even is a grand um, um, any, it, it did we leave out anything? Uh, did, did our purpose here is to make you think and uh, try to explore some other possibilities? Well, I would recommend to anyone, you know, practice Tai Chi, pick up a book mm -hmm. on Qigong. Um, it will help. It will help mm, increase your health. It can mm -hmm. resolve illnesses, um, can make your life much more satisfying, much more interesting. Not, not the local news, just last week they had a segment on Tai Chi mm -hmm. for people, uh, for seniors, and how okay. wonderful it, it, it just worked for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's the Tai Chi that's commonly practiced is probably less than 1% of the, mm -hmm. the real Tai Chi that uh, has just enormous power. Um, and uh, there's one really good book that's available by, what is it, Shambhala Press? Um, I think so. And it's called Tai Chi Classics. And it's mm -hmm. the real Tai Chi, the, the ancient Tai Chi, that has an enormous amount of power. And if a person can get hold of that book, that's a really good one, too. Yeah. But uh, a person doesn't have to be psychic to... No. No. Um, yeah, so th th that's usually what when my phone yeah. rings and they say, what are you talking about? Do you have to be psychic to take the class? <laughs> well, no, and, and everyone has... Sometimes. I mean, everyone has intuition. Um, and uh, everyone has a certain amount of ability, and, and that ability can be enhanced. Mm -hmm. um, and these things do help that. Yeah, well, I'm really excited that you know, shared that with me because see, I was not familiar with this mm -hmm. at all. And it's just a never-ending story, though. Yeah. It, it goes from one subject to the next. And, and you've actually promised to come back next week. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, in, in viewers' time, it's going to be next week because you came so far. And we're going to talk about some of our alien relatives. Yeah. That's going to be fun, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. What's next for you? Um, are we out of time? Oh, we got plenty of time. Okay. What, what, what's next for you? In what way? Um, future plans? Or future plans? Uh, reading? Um. We would really like to go to the conference that we mm -hmm. mentioned about Qigong, mm -hmm. and we hope to meet some of the people that we read in the books. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to track down Paul Dong because we heard he moved back to China mm -hmm. and to learn more. And He's the gentleman that uh, is the co-author no? mm -hmm. yeah. of, of China Super Psychics. And the other one we have here, that's volume two. Mm -hmm. Volume two of two, Warriors of Stillness, Meditative Tradition in the Chinese Martial Arts. Uh, speaking of, I know in some of the penitentiaries they are teaching uh, yoga. Mm -hmm. now. How close is yoga and martial arts the same category? Well, yoga is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a philosophy. Philosophy. And most Americans are familiar with uh, just the exercises. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the exercises are very good for, for health and vitality. Mm -hmm. and, uh, health, and, of course, you know, the body and mind are linked. So mm -hmm. as you develop discipline in the body, you can also develop discipline in the mind. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would imagine yoga would be... Um, martial arts of the mind. Yeah. Like that's where I was going with that. Um, I personally don't practice yoga because of all of the baggage that goes along with mm -hmm. it, all of the religious connotations, and uh, 
but for many people it can be very useful. Mm -hmm. um, I know a number of uh, yoga practitioners and yoga instructors, and uh, but I would also encourage people who are adept at yoga to take it to the next step further and also start studying Qigong. Mm -hmm. um, there is, you know, an underlying life force that um, animates and creates things, and the closer a person can get to that source, the more effective it's going to be, the more powerful it's going to be, the less clutter, the less baggage, the less obsolete ideas and belief systems that will be associated with it. Um, it's just, you know, it's pure truth, pure energy, pure life. And uh, for me, that's, that's the ultimate. Because um, yeah. then you don't have all that other stuff that you have to deal with at the same yeah. time. But it's all connected, isn't it? Weird mm -hmm. how you go from, and when when people say, "Well, oh, I don't believe in this, so I'm not into that," mm -hmm. yeah. it doesn't really matter because as long as you are living, yeah, it, it all makes sense. Yeah. yeah, if you're alive, you're practicing qigong. You know, something. It's, I mean, yeah, the qi is flowing through you, whether you believe in it or not. It's still there. So. Uh, <coughs> See, I've, I've asked about everything else. Uh, there is a little story that goes with um, your originating place, um, mm -hmm. Grand Junction. It says that unless you take dirt with you, you have yeah. to return to Grand Junction. I took my dirt with me, and I haven't been there in a while. Yeah. So did you bring any dirt? Not this time. The next time. Next time. Yeah, when we leave <laughs> the, for, for good, we'll mm -hmm. take dirt so we don't have to return. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we could go back by choice, but... Uh, I was told that you not really worked. Yeah. It's really, really amazing. Because this is ev every year, mm -hmm. you know. It's, we, it's we a had, strange had place. It is. I thank you for coming that really, really long way. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to see you next week. And um, maybe we make you think. And you have a really uh, great, uh, what is it, autumn? See you next week. Yeah. OK. It was equinox yesterday. Oh, it was? Yeah, oh. so today's the first day of fall. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. So I asked if you had snow in the mouth.